I'm Wes from Recommended Playing, and this video will cover all of the 70 commemorative Frank West statues in Dead Rising 3. While collecting all of the Frank statues isn't a unique achievement, you will need to pick up all of these golden boys on your way to finishing all of the PP trials for the Prestige Hound achievement. All you need to do is head to the locations on the map and snatch up the statue. Each statue collected gives you a PP bonus, and as you collect more and more, the PP ramps up. You'll get a pretty substantial amount of PP by collecting them all. We'll break these statues down by district as usual. A lot of these Frank statues are just available at any time. Some are cleverly hidden, and some are not hidden at all. Quite a few require specific criteria to unlock, such as side quests or main story progression. I'll mention these in the order of availability after grabbing the ones that are available freely in the various areas. After reaching Rhonda's Rancherama in Ingleton during Chapter Zero, the first set of Frank statues becomes available. You should start off immediately by heading north to the Ingleton Motel. This is the location of your first side quest, and the first Frank is conveniently right beside it. Once you finish talking to Anna, you'll be sent off for spray paint. Simply head to your right to the end of the walkway and you can pick up the very first limited edition Frank. The second and third Franks are on the way to the spray paint locations. Start by heading left and grabbing the first spray paint. Now you can head to the other two located in the west side of Ingleton. Immediately head for the spray paints and pick them up. There's a Frank statue near the final spray paint in the garage. Pick this up after rescuing the survivor. The third Frank statue is on the way back to Anna. It's simply on a porch of one of the houses. On your way back to Anna, pick up the Frank statue from the porch on your left, then finish the side quest for Anna. The fourth Frank statue is at the back of Shanks. You should head back down the main strip of Ingleton towards Rhonda's Rancherama. You can enter Shanks on your right just before the crashed prison bus. Head inside and make an ultimate reaper if you want, and then pass through to the back. The fourth Frank statue is just sitting on the shelves in the back room. Frank number 5 is in the clothing store La Fonda's Fine Threads. This is directly east of the Rancherama. Simply enter the store and head to the back room. Now all you need to do is grab the Frank and get out of here. Frank 6 is on the roof of Dave's Awesome Cars. This is northwest of Rhonda's Rancherama. You'll want to approach from the rear. From here you can climb up the air conditioner unit at the back and climb onto the roof. Now you'll want to sprint and jump across the roof to the other building. Now just grab the Frank statue from the rooftop next to the sign. This is available early, but you'll be forced to come here during main story progression, so you can feel free to pick it up then as well. Frank 7 is gated behind completion of the Psychopath battle in the mission Garden of Peace. You'll need to head to the south side of Ingleton and enter the Psychopath battle. You should get this call close to after collecting the 6th Frank statue if you're keeping pace, but it might be a little bit of a wait otherwise. You'll need to beat Xi in the Psychopath battle. Once you do, you'll get access to the Guan Dao weapon as well as the Happy Good Mart key. You can either enter using the key through the boss arena, or you can head through the street side. Just unlock the door to the back room of Happy Good Mart, and you'll find good old Frank on a shelf. Pick him up. Frank number 8 is on the playground. This is almost directly north of Happy Good Mart. Unfortunately, it is a little bit tricky to get to. You'll want to head to the street north of the playground and look for the Big Buck Hardware Truck. Climb onto the hood, and then jump onto the roof of the truck. Use this to jump onto the nearby roof. Now sprint and jump across to the next roof. Align yourself to the roof of the slide and sprint and jump across. Now you can pick up Frank number 8. Frank number 9 is on the roof of Paradise Platinum Screens. This is in the same street as the previous Big Buck Hardware Truck so you can double back now. Now just head into Paradise Platinum Screens and head up the stairs to your right. Follow this path around to the back room and then head up the stairs to access the roof. The Frank is directly below you on the right side so look for it and then jump down and snatch it up. Frank 10 is close by. It's in the apartment building east of your current location. All you have to do is jump off the roof and then head to the back door. Enter the apartments and head up the stairs. Turn into the first apartment on your left and the Frank will be sitting there on a bedside table. Just grab it once you're clear of the zombies. That's 10 down and 60 more to go. Frank number 11 is in the southernmost point in Ingleton at the Chinese Opera House. All you need to do is make your way inside and grab the Frank off the concrete picnic table. That one's barely hidden. Frank number 12 is directly north of number 11. There's two ways that you can get this one. You can either pass through the maintenance tunnel from the Chinese Opera House's north side, or run around the street side. Just get to this location on the map, and grab the 12th Frank from the right side of the scaffolding with the blue tarps over it. Easy peasy. 
The 13th Frank is available in Chapter 1. You'll make a turret rig and head across the Los Perdidos Bridge as part of the main story. Frank 13 is in a ruined train car. All you need to do is drive until you come across the three stranded survivors on the bridge. Clear the zombies out using a turret rig and then get out. Head into the broken down train car and head about halfway inside. The Frank will be on a seat to your right. Just grab it. Now you need to head to the quarantine area and beat the boss to get into Chapter 2. You'll be tasked with going back to Ingleton, so you may as well grab the few extra francs you can get right now. Head back to Ingleton and work your way to the waypoint for main story progress. This takes you to the sewer access. As soon as you open the door, you just need to grab the franc from the counter on the right side. That's 14. Now just continue through the sewer to the cemetery. Frank 15 is smack dab in the center of the cemetery. Just head to the map location and snag it on your way to the funeral home for Zombrex. After meeting with Gary, just work your way through the funeral home as normal. Once you're tasked with driving the hearse to the strip club, immediately get out. This Frank statue is in the St. Keith's Chapel garage. Simply head back inside and snatch up the 16th Frank statue. Finally moving on from Ingleton, South Almuda is up next. I'll be starting on the east side of South Almuda. You'll simply want to work your way west down the main street. Make a quick detour to your left and head into Special Jay's Cafe. Frank number 17 is inside the popcorn machine at the back. Simply grab it and move on. Frank 18 is in an abandoned apartment. It's a bit complicated to get to. Turn southbound down the main strip to enter the power plant. From here, you'll want to head left and climb onto the power box. Now jump onto the upper scaffolding. You'll want to follow this southbound and then turn left when you see a wooden plank. Follow this into the apartment and then collect the 18th Frank from the bed. The 19th Frank is close by. Exit the apartment and drop back down to ground level. Head south to the street and turn right and then cross the street to Big Buck Heavy Equipment Rentals. Just enter Big Buck Heavy Equipment Rentals and head up the stairs on your right. Pick up Frank 19 from the desk. Frank 20 is also close by. This is at Huge Industrial Co. Get back down to street level and head right into the warehouse. Once you're inside, head right again and enter the small room. Inside in the center is the 20th Frank statue. Only 50 more to go. Frank 21 is thankfully also close by. You'll want to exit the huge industrial co warehouse on the north side. From here, just turn right and head up the highway. Turn off to your right and head up the stairs to the pedestrian overpass. The 21st Frank is on the center of this walkway. Clear the zombies and grab it. Frank number 22 is in the G-Spot strip club. This is on the north side of South Elmuda, so double back past the power plant and head left onto the main street. You'll want to continue forward until you can see the G-Spot on the left side. And people say it's hard to find the G-Spot. <laughs> Enter it, and clear the zombies before heading upstairs. This Frank statue is concealed in a semi-private booth. Head towards it and try to grab it. This is really annoying to grab because of the positioning, but make sure to grab it before moving on. Frank 23 is on the west side of South Almuda. You should head out of the G-Spot and head to the very end of the street. Then simply turn left and work your way down to the Uno Grande outlet store. The Frank is on a shelf on the south side. Simply jump onto the shelf and grab Frank 23. The 24th Frank is directly south at the Rockets Red Glare Fireworks Factory. Simply head into the warehouse and turn left and hop the counter. The 24th Frank will be sitting on a filing cabinet behind the register. Easy grab. Frank 25 is at Big Bucks construction site. If you're in Chapter 3, this will be the exact same location as the side quest, Time for a Hero, with Kenny. From your current location, simply head right and head over to the busted train to get access to the construction site. Then just jump across to the trailer. Kenny should be here, and so should the 25th Frank statue. I'd say we're close, but there's a ton left, unfortunately. Frank number 26 is pretty well hidden. You'll want to head to the location of Nick on the map. This is just north of the warehouse. You'll want to enter the warehouse and climb the stairs to reach the top. Now turn to your left and run across the plank out the window to get to the other rooftop. Now you can run into the alcove and drop down into the apartment. Now run forward and turn into the main room. Pick up the Frank after crossing the room. The top 10 mixed juices book is here, as is every mixed juice in the game as a bonus. To leave, simply jump out the window and then down into the Rancherama. Finally, time to actually do the main story and head to the plane hangar. Head there now, following your waypoint. Convenient for us, Frank 27 is inside the hangar. After watching the cutscene, simply head back towards the exit. The 27th Frank is on a workbench on your left as you make your getaway. Frank 28 is on the way out of South Almuda. We're out of here for story progress anyways. Head north back out towards the highway and Ingleton. 
Towards the end, you're going to want to turn to your right and head into the bus depot. The bus depot has a back exit into the tunnel. Pass through here, and on the way out, you'll find a Frank statue near a locked door. It's time to head for the illegals in Sunset Hills. Head back eastbound down the first street we came in on. Work your way all the way back to the highway here. Now instead of heading left to get onto the highway, head to your right to head down to the shortcut to the subway station. You'll pass through South Almuda train repair. Before heading straight through, head to your right and pass a pallet jack and a series of stacked pallets. Hidden inside this alcove is the 29th Frank statue. Grab it. While not technically in South Almuda, the 30th Frank is close by. You'll want to head towards sunset from the train yard. You'll be passing through the aqueduct. On the way, you'll pass a cement truck on your left. You'll want to climb up this truck to get access to the upper level of the concrete pillar holding up the Los Perdidos Bridge. Turn to your left and grab the 30th Frank statue hidden in this little shanty. That's all for South Almuda for now. It's time to move to Central City. Double back and cross the bridge from South Almuda to Central City. There's a lot of statues in Central City to no one's surprise. Frank 31 is in the courthouse. This is just immediately on your right as you head into Central City from South Almuda. Simply bust the glass and head inside. The Frank statue will be on your left, on a table between two couches. Frank 32 is near the South Illegal Safe House and the back side of the police station. Head down this street to find the Bikini Vabe. Then turn and head up the stairs near the walking path. From here, you can just jump onto the glass roof of the walkway. Run across this, then jump and pick up the Frank statue from the roof. Frank 33 is basically directly north of you in a clothing store. Jump back down to the main road and head north. When you can turn into a walking-only shopping strip, head to your right. Now enter the first store on your left. Pass through to the back room and pick up the 33rd Frank statue off the shelves. Frank 34 is close by. Simply exit out the back of the clothing store. Cross the street and enter Security Services Inc. Pass through the area and enter the office. The Frank will be inside the office on the right side. All you have to do is pick it up. Frank 35 is finally here, the halfway point. This is very close by. Simply exit the security office and head to your left into the alley. You'll arrive at a loading bay. Grab the Frank from the top of the cardboard boxes on your right. Simple as. Frank 36 is under the T-Rex statue at the museum. Head through the store to get back to the street. Now just turn to your right and work your way towards the map marker. The T-Rex statue is huge. You just can't miss it. Simply climb the statue and grab the Frank statue from between its legs. Frank number 37 is in Sculpt Yourself. This is the store southwest of the T-Rex statue. Simply cross the intersection to get into Sculpt Yourself. Once inside, head into the office on the right and grab it off the desk. That's one more down. The 38th Frank is on the roof of Columbian Roast Masters Cafe. You'll want to head to Columbian Roast Masters and then pass through. Head to the alley at the back of the store and head up the staircase. Here you can jump onto a nearby roof and then turn around and get onto the roof of Columbian Roast Masters. Now you can just head to your right and grab the 38th Frank statue from the air conditioning unit. Frank number 39 is in the southeast corner of Central. This is behind the tennis courts. Jump off the roof of Columbian Roast Masters and head across the street. Clear the zombies around the tennis courts and then grab the 39th Frank from the bench by the fences. Frank 40 is in the Burgess Dawson Hotel. You want to head into the Burgess Dawson from the north side, the main entrance. Immediately on your left, you'll find an area under construction. You'll want to climb the nearby scaffolding. Now jump across to the scaffolding on the other side. Now climb onto the crate and use it to launch yourself to the second level of the first scaffolding. The Frank's here, just grab it. The 41st Frank is also in the Burgess Dawson Hotel. Jump off the scaffolding and work your way around the central rotunda. Head down the stairs and to your right. Follow the maintenance tunnels to a small locker room. The Frank is in a locker on the right side. You may have to clear out a zombie or two. Grab the Frank when you're done. Frank 42 is in the northeast corner of Central City in Spore Trance. This is a simple smash and grab. Run to the northeast corner of Central City and enter Spore Trance. The Frank is simply on the counter with the cash registers. Grab it. Frank 43 is directly west of your current location. Get back on the main road and head westbound. When you see a white box truck in front of you, climb up the hood. Now jump onto the cab and run up and jump to the awning on your right. Grab the Frank on the awning in front of the closed display. The 44th Frank statue requires some setup. You should head south to the Rental Rama on the east side. You'll want a tall vehicle. The turret rig is ideal for this. 
Grab one. Now you'll want to drive forward out of the Rancherama until you hit a barricade in front of you. You should be able to fit the turret rig through the gap on the right side. Now just drive forward until you're under the awning. Exit the turret rig and proceed to climb it. Use the height of the roof to jump onto the awnings. Now you just need to head to the left, jumping across the awnings until you reach the Frank statue. Frank 45 is pretty obtuse to get. You'll want to enter the Burgess Dawson from the west side. This is a side entrance. Now you should head up to the second level via the staircase on your left after entering. Work your way around this area until you find an exit to an outside staircase. Head down but jump onto the roof in front of you. Now work your way around the rooftops and access the walkways until you can wrap all the way around to the north side of the Burgess Dawson. You'll find the Frank statue next to a large sign. Grab it. There's 25 more Franks to go and there's a few more in Central, but for now it's time to move on to Sunset Hills. Sunset Hills has quite a few francs. When you approach from the south side, you'll have one very close by. Get out of your vehicle and run northeast until you can run up a staircase. Follow the staircase to the top, and then follow the path to the end to find the 46th franc. This is also very close to where you fight Jerry during the psychopath battle, so you're free to pick it up then as well. Frank 47 is very deceptively placed. On your map, it's on the right side, but to access it, you have to go to your left. Head left and enter severed ties across the street. Work your way up to the second level and then smash the glass outside to get to the outside roof. Climb the roof directly in front of you, then work your way to the next roof. Cross this roof and then jump down to the roof below. Now you'll be on top of the car dealership. Simply collect the 47th Frank statue from the air conditioner. Frank 48 is directly south of your current objective, the communications tower. Head to the southeast side of Sunset Hills. Now you can use the smashed SUV as a jumping off point to get to the awning above you. Now use the awning to get onto the upper balcony. Hop the railing and head to the right side to grab the 48th Frank statue. Frank 49 is in Big Buck Hardware. Make sure you enter the comms tower and talk to Lauren first to progress the quest line. Once that's done, exit and head to your right. Big Buck Hardware is on your right. Now just enter the lumber yard on your right side. Climb onto the stack of lumber and grab the 49th Frank statue. Frank 50. Feeling close, but we're still a long ways off. Directly west of Big Buck Hardware is a house. Cross the street and jump the gate. Head up the stairs into the tree house and grab the Frank from up here. This one's a freebie. The 51st Frank is in the top left corner of Sunset in a store. You should make sure to pick up Lauren's ring box on the way. Once that's done, you can use the road roller in the blocked off area to make a ladder to the roof. Now climb up and drop down the hole. The Frank here is hidden in the back room. Just head there and grab it. Now you're probably thinking that we didn't actually need the road roller for that one and you'd be right, but we need it for number 52. Double back and climb the road roller again and get access to the roof. This time cross and then drop down to the lower level. Now spring and jump across to the toy store. Next, head up the right side. Sprint and jump to the balcony. Now all you have to do is follow the balcony around to find the Frank just out in the open. Frank 53 is another tricky one. You'll want to head to the toy store south of number 52. Instead of going inside, head to the box truck nearby. Climb the truck and get onto the roof. Head across, but turn to your right. You'll want to drop down to the balcony below you. The Frank statue is in this party room. Clear the room of zombies and work your way to the Frank statue at the back left corner. Snag it when it's safe to do so. Frank 54 looks like it's at the school, but it's actually in the tunnel under Los Perdidos Utility Company. Head there now. This is on the way to the school, but instead just hang a quick right to get inside. Then head down the stairs on your left into the sewers. Follow this path into the circular room. This area has zombies, so clear them out. Now just pick up the Frank statue off of the control console. Frank 55 is in the locker room of the subway station. This is a little bit confusing to get to. You should head back topside and enter the subway station from the streets. Now head to your right, downstairs, and loop down. Pass through the main subway area and head left to find a staircase upwards. At the top, just turn right to enter the locker room. Clear the zombies and collect the Frank. 15 left. Frank 56 is at the school, so it's finally time to get Lauren's tattoo kit too. Head back topside from the subway station. You'll want to work your way around to the back of the school. You'll find yourself in some tennis courts. Look for the stairs and climb up them. The Frank statue is sitting on a bit of trim on the school in the middle landing. Grab it and then head back around to the front of the school. Climb up the bus and grab Lauren's tattoo kit while you're in here. Now is a good time to progress the story, so head back to the comms tower and make some progress. You'll need to destroy some cameras in Sunset as part of main story progression. 
The first one is north, so it's a good chance to get to the mansion we skipped earlier. Frank 57 is pretty far up. Jump the gate to get into the mansion, and then work your way up the spiraling staircases. Pass through the tennis courts and head up to the next staircase. At the top, turn around and grab the Frank statue from the walkway. Frank 58 is nearby. We can't actually get into the mansion yet, so hold off. Instead, work your way around this path towards the back of the mansion. On your left, there's a hole in the wall. Jump over it and you'll land in a garden. Follow this path to the left and you'll find the 58th Frank just sitting on the edge. Careful picking this one up. You could fall off. Frank 59 is southwest of the mansion. It's in your line of sight from the last Frank. Drop down back to the street and you'll want to work your way around the house to the outside staircase. You should climb this and you'll reach the second level. The Frank is in here. Just head to the table under the painting on the left side and pick it up. Frank 60 is in the musician's house. This is very close to your current location. Simply jump off of the balcony and it'll be on your left. Of course, if you have a split shot, you can do the PP trial here first before doubling back. Then simply enter the house and head through to the Frank statue. Only 10 left and they're the most widespread of them all. The remainder of these Frank statues are gated by story and side quest progress. It's time to continue the main story. I guess, technically, this is available earlier than Chapter 3, but it's a good chance to double back for it. You'll be pushed down into Almuda Farms Underground to fight a psychopath, Albert, before finishing off the military supplies. Once you're done with that, you'll come out of Almuda Farms. You should head back to the box truck on the south side now. Climb the box truck cab and jump onto the roof. Now jump onto the landing on the roof. Head left and make sure to pick up a crate. You shouldn't need this, but it seems to help. Head around to the roof and there will be a little shanty area here. Drop the crate nearby and you can use it to boost onto the shanty roof. You can get onto the roof without this, but it's annoying as all heck. Once you're on top, pick up the 61st Frank statue. Conveniently, the 62nd Frank is also close by. You'll want to follow this path to the illegal safe house. Work your way around the walkway and enter the safe house. Clear it out of any zombies and once that's finished, you can head out and through the new walkway area. There's a Frank just sitting here on your left. That's all in South Elmuda for now. You'll want to continue main story progression, including heading back to the illegals at the comm tower. You'll then be tasked with going to the police station. Fight your way through the police station and complete the boss fight. Once you're done, you'll be outside. Immediately turn around and re-enter the police station. Head through this hallway and turn left to get down into evidence storage. Kick the door open to get into the parking garage. Head up the right side and enter the office on the right. The 63rd Frank will be in one of the lockers. Grab it and you're done in the police station. Double back to get to the streets. You should immediately head to the hotel for main story progress. Get the cutscenes and you'll have to wait for Red to get some fuel. As soon as you trigger this event, the underground should be available. You'll want to work your way to the north side of Central City. This is right before the highway. You'll find a few survivors on your right. Clear the zombies around them and then enter the underground parking area. Head down and follow the path to your left. The Frank will be in a small room on the left side, near some storage lockers. You can grab a blueprint and open a few locked doors since you're here, but otherwise we're done in this area once you've got Statue 64. Around this time you will likely have received a call for Big D on the South Bridge. You should head to the Central City Rancho Rama. You can make whatever combo vehicle you want here, but the roller hog is just fine. You'll want to drive this south to wrap around Central City to avoid all of the insane blockades. Once you're on the highway, drive your combo vehicle of choice to Big D. Talk to him and he'll be impressed by your wheels. Hop on, boys! Now just drive him into South Elmuda. Drive him through the power plant and then unfortunately you'll have to ditch your roller hog and just hoof it. Your target is Laos Cream Dream which was previously locked. With Big D's help, he'll unlock it. Now you'll get some dialogue and have to take out Big D. Of course, the Frank statue is just there, ripe for the taking. Touch it, Barclay. The ink and gold. Grab the 65th Frank statue. Only five left. You can now save Candy by taking out Big D. Of course, you should pick up his gun to add it to the weapon locker. Now you'll have to wait for Red to find the fuel. Do whatever you see fit during this downtime, like beating Darlene, once you're called back to the communications tower, you should head there. Once that series of cutscenes is completed, you'll be tasked with going to the Ingleton Cab Company. This is also the next location for a Frank. Clear out the cab company. You should head into the left building and then head to the stairs at the back. Climb them and then exit out to the roof. 
The 66th franc will just be sitting there ripe for the taking. Grab it. Now you can complete the main story cases at the cab company. After completing the cab company, you should have gotten a call for Playtime. This is at Annie's old fashioned triple X shop in South Almuda. You should head there now. Make sure you have absolutely no followers since you can't enter with them. If Candy's with you, you better get rid of her, even though she's a big lady. All you need to do is demolish Dylan with whatever your weapon of choice is. Zars are great, the king of gun combo weapons. Once Dylan is down, free the two survivors. Now you can head upstairs. Work your way into the office and pick up the 67th limited edition Frank. Only three more. You'll want to do a few side quests like Underarmed to arm up a police officer and then take Red's fuel to the plane. Here, Rhonda will tell you that Diego is gone. You're off to the museum once again, which has the next Frank. Bring a Czar and blast Diego in the museum. Once the fight's over, you'll be in a Dead Rising lore display at the museum. Simply jump the railing nearby and pick up the Frank statue next to the Frank standee. This is 68 of 70, only two more to go. Frank, 69, is a ways off. You'll need to beat the gang and then bring Diego back to the plane. Then you'll get some waiting around time. Eventually, through this, you'll get a call for Remotely Helpful. This is the psychopath Teddy in the mansion at Sunset Hills. Make your way there now. Head all the way around and enter the previously locked door. This fight is free. Just run around and smash all of the consoles and then head downstairs. Once that fight is over, you'll want to pick up the armory key and head back to the main area. Head upstairs and get into the bedroom on your left. This Frank is just sitting on a dresser in the bedroom. Just grab it. That's 69. Dude, nice. Only one left. There's a ton of stuff to do until the last Frank becomes available. You'll need to wait, and then head back to Rhonda. Then do the most absolutely tacked on section of the game. You have to collect a few plane parts and then fight the worst series of bosses in the game. After all that, you have to do a bunch of run around in the subway because Capcom Vancouver just couldn't help themselves and they made everything as long as humanly possible. Once all that's finished, you'll be finally tasked with getting to the karaoke bar BB's Box. This is the location of the 70th and final Frank statue. You'll have a couple of options here. You can either kill Gary or head to Ingleton to bring Rhonda here. I've played through this playthrough enough, so sorry Gary. G -g -g get gone. Once you're inside BB's box, simply head to the back of the coat check and pick up the last Frank statue. You'll get a huge PP bonus and you're done. That's all for the Frank statues, and now you're one step closer to that sadistic prestige hound achievement. Whoever designed this achievement deserves all kind of divine retribution. Thanks for watching everyone. A special shout out to my Patreon supporters. Your support goes a long way with helping the channel out. We're currently on a campaign to reach 1,000 supporters on Patreon, and every single dollar adds up. Otherwise, you can leave a super thanks on this or any one of my videos. I'm not picky. You can also become a channel member for some fun little emotes and a special badge during live streams. Heck, even subscribing to YouTube Premium helps me out and gives you an ad-free viewing experience. That's a win-win. If you like the Dead Rising content, you can check out the Dead Rising playlist. This features multiple video guides on how to rescue all of the survivors and how to get all of the achievements for the Dead Rising series. This is hours of fun for the whole family. You can also like and subscribe for more Dead Rising 3 content coming. Thanks for watching.